Hi, this is Sally Wood for Be Inspired and today I am going to be showing you how to make scatter cushions. They don't have piping on them so they're nice and easy. There's just a few pointers that I'm going to show you. One of them is one of them is the fact that this fabric has a 24 inch pattern repeat. So I cut them at 24 inches so the patterns would match and then I cut down to the sizes I need. If you're making more than one cushion just make sure you've got your pattern repeat so that, that all the cushions match and look nice. Some people don't care, they will just put them together and that's fine too. So let's get on with it. This fabric actually had a pattern repeat going sideways which was quite easy to follow so I folded the fabric along the markings that I chose and I used that across the fabric to cut and then all I did was folded the fabric in half like that and cut down. On upholstery fabric it's quite handy. They usually tell you which way is up so I put a seam joining the bottom of each side together and it only comes in maybe two to three inches on each side. I'm going to iron that out. You need to finish off on this end where the zip goes in then iron the zip seam open. Usually I just do half an inch but because there's no piping it's a little bit more awkward so I'm going to just open that up to five eighths of an inch and press along here using my tape measure to make sure that it's even. So I just move the tape measure along like this and iron very carefully into place all the way along. Just be cautious. This is the time consuming part. You think that you're gaining because you're not making piping but what you lose on one thing you have to put in in another way. So usually I wouldn't worry about this because the piping dictates where everything goes. I got to this end, flip it over and then work my way back along the second side. Some people will put the zip in on one side from this way so the zip teeth are on the edge there. When I'm doing cushions like this I don't like to do it that way. I prefer to do it this way. And again work my way all the way across. I have continuous zipping so I always have to put my own zippers on and so undo that, slide that kind of into place and that up on the other side. Make sure it looks even and sometimes these take a few attempts that looks like that's going in first. I prefer to do this if it's attached to something but I don't have that luxury so I've got to do them like this. The trick is to have the little lever on the back down because it has teeth in it and it will stop this moving up. One side will go in and then the other side. It's a bit of patience. There we go. I think that might be it. Yeah, that looks like it's in line. <laughs> Easiest way to check is pull it down. And as long as that side or the other side doesn't bulge out, it looks even. I'm fine. Okay, the zipper foot is in place and I am going to turn it that way up so that the teeth are down. I need about an inch back from that join here. Line that up, pop it down. And I'm going to run this side of the zip about an eighth of an inch in from the outside there, all the way down. If you can eyeball something, it makes a big difference. And it might wobble, but we'll wait and see. As I get closer, leave the needle down, pick the foot up, slide the slider back behind the foot, drop the foot down and keep the distance as it was and carry on sewing. All the way to the other end. Now I leave my zip attached until I get to the other end. This also keeps it relatively even. The seam is here, so I'm going to bring that down, cut it off, straighten the sides out together, and here's my little piece of fabric that I'm going to put over the end. I'll put that across the end before I get down there, making sure that this side of the seam is more or less where it needs to be. It can come in a little bit, but it's more or less where it needs to be. So on down. If you get the fabric caught up, just lift the foot up and it will go back underneath. Take another stitch. There we go. Foot up, twist the fabric, straighten everything out so it's lying flat, put the foot down, go across, reverse. Because the zipper foot's on, it's sometimes a little bit awkward to reverse. Go across, needle down, foot up, twist the fabric back round, and here again, line the side of the fabric about an eighth of an inch in from the side, which will cause this to go up slightly on the sewn inside. Hold it in position and sew into place. The thing with the second side is you need to make sure that both sides are running equal. Find the end of the zip, pull it even, roll it into place, pinch it all together and sew. This is quite a stretchy fabric so I really need to make sure the zip is in even. Sometimes you don't need to do it that way. I usually do it anyway on the second side because it kind of walks. 
I think it's the way the zip is wound on the cob. One side seems to always be stretched compared to the other. Now I'm going to close that up to there. When I get closer, lift the foot up, push the slide on through so all of this is closed. Put the foot down and carry on going. Technically, you could put one side in and then put the zipper on, but I always do it this way. When you're almost at the end, get your fabric, fold it in half, put it on the end of the zipper. Now it kind of bulges out because here is where the seam is and it does its own thing. Stop, just like you did before, forward and reverse. Drop the needle down, foot up, string all of that out. I usually go back about an inch over my original stitching. Remove and cut the threads. Change your foot over to the normal foot, come back, pop it down. And I'm going to overstitch the stitches I did earlier. Now usually I put a half inch on here, but I'm a bit shy of fabric for the width, so I'm going to put three eighths on. It's a little bit smaller than I want, but it'll be fine. If you go a quarter of an inch, it's a bit stressful for the fabric, but this should be okay. Only because I've got to give it extra fabric on the other side. Make sure that your ends are lined up so that everything goes in at the same rate. Half it so you're halfway along. Make your way to the end of the first side. This is slightly folded up, that's why it looks a bit shy. You get to the top, turn with your half inch seam allowance, which is there. It's a bit generous, but I'll, I'll pull that round. Again, make sure that your corners are level. Grab in the center and move towards the center. On this, because the fabric was a bit shy, I kept the salvages on both sides. Go to the salvage. This is why I said, don't worry, one side shy, because this is going to be over. The one eight that I've lost on one side, I've had to gain on the other. So I'm going to go down here, make sure that my stitches are on this side of the white line. One thing to remember, I've got two selvages here. One, the pattern goes all the way to the end and obviously you can see there's a white line there. Sometimes you have white patches on both sides and if that's the case, make sure that the widest one is the one on top. That's the rule of thumb. Then you don't have to guess where you're sewing. And then sew on down. I don't like it when fabrics are this tight, but it was just one of those things. Pull the end, make sure it's square on, make sure the fabric there's square on, and sew to the bottom corner, and then finish off. I'm going to just cut around the corners, but I'm going to leave almost a quarter of an inch there on each one. Do it to all four corners. I'm going to iron it inside out first. I can see the creases here. I'll do one side, a little bit of steam if necessary, and then do the other side. Now I've got this just over wool but not quite on cotton. It could be up on cotton because this is a linen union which means it's got cotton and linen in it. I'm going to put my finger in the front of the zip not behind it and open it up both ways. Put my fingers on the corner like that push it in and it should get it quite sharp first time and then work my way around. I've folded that over. I'm just lightly put it because I don't want to push any weight on here otherwise I'll have a crease there that I don't want. Just push that lightly over and then roll that into place and I should get a relatively crisp fold along that seam. Do that on all three sides. Don't need to worry about the bottom. I will cut back all the threads and repress. Once you press one side into place then press the second side just in case there's any creases that need to be got out. It's actually quite a simple cushion. As I say, it, just be careful if you've got a shortage of fabric. Okay, so I've stuffed this one away, but something I did want to show you. This is the original, and you see how open that zip is? When this is closed, like that, you can see how the zip is actually hidden by the fabric, and that's the way it should be, not the other way. I left this cover in here because they've literally just filled this up with the filler. That's a bit annoying. So if this lady needs to wash her covers, she doesn't have to worry about the filler being destroyed. She can just take the inside out and wash it. So I think she'll be pleased with that. Thank you for joining me today on this film. It's just a short one. It's just showing you some pointers if you don't want to put piping around a cushion and how to hide the zip. That's quite irritating if it's quite visible. Not that you can see it because obviously things like that. Please subscribe if you want to hear more from me. A thumbs up would be absolutely brilliant and then I know how I'm doing. And in the meantime, see you later. Take care. Ciao.